Now you're going to hear me talk a lot about the Penn State extension, which again, that's where I got a lot of my resource and information, which led to this point right now. Now I'm not a forester. I did have over the last five years, about 10 different foresters come in, both public and private. Some that were looking for a potential timber harvest, others that were looking at ways that we can improve uh, the timber quality moving forward. So I'm not the forester, I'm not even the landowner. I'm just fortunate enough uh, to have a relative that is allowing me that opportunity to do the right thing, what we see here behind me. So how did we get to this point, a pulpwood timber harvest? Uh, well, first we need to step back. I'm kind of moving a little too quickly and talk about uh, some of the work that we did in the summertime in order to get to this point. In my last video, I showed you what this property looked like in the summer, which was covered in fast growing plants and shrubs that covered the forest floor. Still grass, hastened fern, striped maple. They're also not a preferred deer browse, so there was nothing to slow or stop the spread. And if we don't control these plants, this, has, this property has no chance in establishing its native biodiversity. So I needed to eliminate the competitive vegetation. In hindsight, I really should have started this two years before harvest to remove much of the invasive plants because I know there is a seed bed of still grass just waiting for a canopy release to germinate. So there's going to be a pre-emergent and likely a post-emergent herbicide application following the timber cut. Now my first herbicide application was to eliminate the current stand of still grass and fern. I've learned stillgrass is easy to kill, but it just produces a ton of seeds, which is why it takes several years to remove, mainly because of the established seed bed in the soil. I used a 2% glyphosate solution for both stillgrass and fern. A slightly higher solution was needed to eliminate the fern. So I started in early July, continued into late August. And by September, the stillgrass already had seed heads and it was too late for any additional removal. Some areas took two applications because of the density of these two plants. Because I don't live near this property, I needed a lot of my spray equipment to be mobile. I used a 55 gallon barrel for my water supply. And once I made it to the location, I attached a PVC tube with a valve to control the flow. Using a still mist blower, I mixed a 2% glyphosate solution into the four gallon tank. Now I originally wore a disposable suit. It didn't seem to work well for me. I just made sure the clothes that I wore were only used for spraying and I had a change of clothes when I was done. An old dress shirt with thin fabric and long sleeves was helpful and I bought the lightest pair of hiking shoes then put knee high rubber boots over them. Certainly helped on those long afternoons I was in the woods. Eye protection, gloves and a mask was a must for me. A headband to collect the sweat was also helpful. Now it was cumbersome to try to lift that mist blower over my shoulders. So a tailgate or something waist high was nice to set the mist blower onto so I could get it on my shoulders with less force. I could manage about a half acre per tank with the mist blower, which took about 20 minutes to a half hour of spray time, depending on the terrain. So that equates to about an acre an hour. Now I realize this is not for everyone. I even considered paying for this work to be done. I've come across several companies that use backpack sprayers and I've called some that use mechanical equipment. Either way, controlling these plants that we had in the summertime is absolutely necessary in order to get a good regenerative growth and biodiversity in this area over the next couple of years.